everybody, this is Stacy Pace with Spectrum The Other Clinic, here again for another fun-filled day of education. Uh, this one is going to be for those on testosterone therapy. Uh, I have had a lot of patients who came to me already on T who exclaimed whenever I would tell them things, you know, that I thought that they should have already been taught by their provider. Uh, they would say, oh, I wish someone would have told me that a long time ago, or they discovered it on their own and they just mentioned it to me. And so I thought, well, a good thing to do would be to do a video about uh, what happens to the bottom area whenever you go on T, because this is a subject that is discussed a lot, apparently, um, amongst trans folks, but not amongst trans folks and their providers, which is sad, but there it is. Uh, so uh, this is basically just a little video of something that I tell my patients quite frequently whenever they're uh, enrolling in testosterone therapy and getting started just so that they have a heads up. Um, and also I had a question from someone previously that said, uh, if you go on T, are you going to absolutely have to get a hysterectomy? That answer is no. Um, now it might solve a lot of problems <laughs> if you got one. Uh, a lot of this stuff I'm about to mention, uh, you won't have to deal with. But, uh, but anyway, so in regards to that, no, you do not have to get a hysterectomy. Like that's not something that you absolutely will have in your future if you go on T. However, it can minimize uh, problems as time goes on if you do get one. And I know that a lot of people want one anyway. So, but, uh, anyways, so what happens to the bottom area whenever you, uh, you go on T? Well, one of the most notable things is that you get clitoral growth. Um, and I mean, really and truly, most people are pretty cool with that, you know. Uh, it actually helps with a lot of folks' dysphoria because the clitoris can actually uh, grow out to be, you know, a few, you know, a couple inches long, about a micro penis size, uh, and it looks just like a phallus. So it looks just like, you know, a little mini penis sitting there, and it can become erect and everything, um, just like unto a cisgender male's penis, because whenever we were all in utero. Uh, those parts down there didn't differentiate until a certain part of our development and everything used to look the same. So it's the same tissues and everything as would be in a cisgender dude's penis right there growing on you whenever you start tea. But uh, anywho, so that's something to definitely know about because that's one of the first things actually physically that happens to you whenever you get on tea uh, is that. And um, anyway, so that's kind of a positive, uh, but you know, it does, you do need to know that that's gonna happen when you go on tea. However, there are some things that are um, not exactly negatives, but they're also just very annoying um, and or can be negatives for folks that are on tea that still have uh, uterus and you know, obviously still have a vagina. Um, so let's get into those. Um, number one, thing to know whenever you're going on tea uh, about these parts is that you're basically going to put all these parts through menopause. Uh, and what I mean by that is that whenever you start taking tea, it's going to kind of overpower the effects of estrogen. Uh, and so it will decrease your estrogen levels and uh, it will also decrease estrogen's effects. Now, when it does that, the parts that you have that are dependent on estrogen for their main functions, such as uterus and ovaries and uh, the vagina and all its parts, uh, are going to suffer a little bit from that. Uh, and so I caution people that whenever you go on tea, you may have some uh, mild to moderate abdominal cramping here and there on times when it might not be time for your cycle. Um, and I describe that lovingly as your uterus just kind of shriveling up and getting, you know, very small and, uh, and just basically going into hibernation. Uh, but it does cause some, uh, some discomfort, not quite unlike, uh, menstrual cramps, uh, when this is happening. I mean, this usually will resolve during that first year of tea therapy. Um, so, I mean, it's not something that goes on and on forever. Um, also, it can make your cycles very irregular uh, and or quit altogether, which 90% of folks who go on full dose T therapy, their cycles stop altogether within six to 12 months. Um, if the cycle doesn't stop, then that's something you need to discuss. Uh, and I touched on that in another video. But, uh, but anyway, it can make it very irregular and then stop it. Uh, and then one of the things that people don't tend to talk too much about is the actual like external and 
just right at the entrance of the vagina, what happens to that? So whenever you go on tea, again, you know, your estrogen levels are affected and um, your natural flora and fauna of the vaginal canal and the external features of the vagina get affected. Now, what does that mean? So whenever you have a good balance of your, your nat body's natural bacteria and things like that, it protects itself. Um, and when these things get unbalanced, mm, not so much. So you'll see a decrease in the uh, natural lubrication down there, which then changes the bacterial uh, colonies and things, your flora and fauna. And uh, that can actually lead to putting you at a little bit higher risk for getting uh, urinary tract infections or yeast infections. So it's something to kind of be aware about because if you start having issues down there while you're on tea, you might actually want to get those looked at a little bit sooner than you would have previously because those problems can get real big real quick when your body doesn't have its natural defenses at 100% down there. Um, anyways, another thing to be aware of with, uh, with regards to the decrease in natural self-lubrication, again, that happens to women who go through menopause. Uh, anything that happens to them could pretty much happen to your parts whenever you're on tea. Um, and that decrease in self-lubrication is going to make friction a thing, like either from walking or from sexual activity. So if you have any kind of penetrative sexual activity, you may want to go and get a good water-based lubricant because dry friction is nobody's friend. It can create micro tears in your tissues down there and then they can get infected and then all sorts of bad things can happen from that. So be very careful with that. And, um, you know, some people get it so bad that even just walking, the act of just moving along can actually be quite painful. And if this kind of stuff happens and it's really bothering you and you want to do something about it, there are some topical estrogen creams that do not absorb systemically. So they will not raise your estrogen levels in your body, but you can apply them downstairs and they can help those tissues that are ex bleh, estrogen dependent and, uh, and they can function a little bit better like that so that you don't have those annoying symptoms. But um, anyways, so that's kind of a brief overview of some fairly major things though to be aware of that happen to most everybody. Uh, you know, you will be at a slightly increased risk for UTIs and yeast infections. You will likely get a decrease in self-lubrication. Some people it's not that big a deal. Some people it's a huge deal. Uh, and then you may have some intermittent abdominal cramping, not unlike menstrual cramps. And uh, also you may have just wickedly wild menstrual cycles for a little while before they eventually stop. But again, if your cycles haven't stopped by the time you hit a year on T, you need to be talking to your provider, whether that's me or someone else, about options that you have for shutting that down, um, unless you just don't mind. I know a lot of people mind it a lot, so there you go. Uh, and there's a whole nother video I did on uh, menstrual cycles with uh, folks that are on T, so check that out if that's of interest to you. But other than that, uh, that covers the big topics. And uh, if anyone has any other topics they'd like me to cover, they can always give me a shout out and uh, I will try and get a video out there. So thanks for watching, y'all. I hope you learned something. Bye.